and welcome back to my shed. My name is Paul Hopewell. In this video I'll show you what I went through to improve the V-Ways on my South Bend 13 lathe. This stage of the process will probably raise a few eyebrows and a few comments. The technique I used is not tested and is probably doomed to fail. Either way I'll show you what I went through to achieve my goal. This is one of the comments I made in the first video of this series. So this is my challenge. I'm going to repair the main bed slides myself. I know that I can't make them as good as a professional outfit, but I'm certain I can improve it from where it is at the moment. I'm certain that I've now improved the main bed slideways, and in doing so I have negated the need to scrape the main saddle and the tailstock base plate. At first I thought of making a slide contraption using the straight surfaces as a guide. On top of this contraption a cutting device of one sort or another would have been attached. Heath Robinson would certainly have been impressed with my two choices. Primarily I would have used an indexing table with a cross slide bolted on the top of it, allowing me to accurately alter the depth of cut and the angle as well. At the time I had two cutter choices, one an angle grinder and two a high speed cutting tool and a lot more elbow grease. Until, quite by accident, I stumbled upon a product that claimed to replace worn material. I was still making late inquiries about this product at the end of video 4, hence the little teaser at the end. Anyway, to cut a long story short, the smallest quantity of this product was far too much for me and, and far too costly. However, America seems to have a product that's ready made. It's a small enough quantity and if that works well, it should do the trick. It's called JB Weld, Cold Weld. Yes, a metallized epoxy resin. But I went a step further and added some cast iron dust to the resin before adding the hardener. Obviously I didn't know what amount to add at first so I did a couple of small mixes. One of one iron to one resin by volume and it was practically impossible to mix all the iron dust before the resin became overwhelmed. So then I did a mix of about one to three resin. The small sample was still difficult to mix as it turned into a thick clumpy paste, but when the hardener was added to it, it became manageable again. This was my plan. Each side of all three slideways had an area of wear that required a modicum of reconstruction. In the previous video I showed you that I had straightened up the tops of all three V-ways. I did this primarily to give me as many options as possible for whatever method I eventually settled with. On this sketch you can see that the top face is done, and the side faces are in need of a little bit of tender loving care. This meant that I had to maintain some sort of height, and therefore profile. That meant that I needed a method of maintaining the same level all the way along the slide. But because I've already reset the top faces, I found, by trial and error, that I needed some 1.5mm diameter rollers. Each of the aluminium or aluminum angle sections were more than long enough to span the worn areas to keep them on an even keel, so to speak. And if there are a number of 1.5mm dowels all the way along the top of each V-way, then the angle material will be held in the correct position for the epoxy to set. These 1.5mm rollers were slightly oversized to allow me some wiggle room when I eventually scrape in each slide. A few days after my test batch was set, I left it on some clean wood and left it outside to the mercy of the weather. After a couple of days there was a distinct layer of rust on top of the epoxy. That should help with the lubrication and match as best as I can guess with the bedways.
True to form, I didn't buy a bunch of 1.5mm rollers. I found some in the form of round wire nails. With the heads removed and the burrs at both ends removed, you'd hardly notice. For the epoxy resin not to stick to the aluminium angle, all burrs had to be removed and then buffed. This is a view of the aluminium angle on one of the V-slides. And you can see one of the DIY rollers trapped under it. Because you can see that it has some drag on the roller, indicates that the angle plate is very lightly held off the slide. And it should provide excess material over the slideway when the epoxy is set. The first slide to get this treatment is going to be the slide requiring the least amount of repair, the tail slide V. In this view you can see a couple of weights, one on each end. And if I tuck the aluminium angle along its length an audible click is heard over the worn area indicating that the angle plate should be okay to hold the resin in the right place. To hold the rollers in place I simply dropped them into the upturned angle plate and they found the best place by themselves. And to make sure they stayed there I placed a small drop of super glue to grab them as soon as they fell into place, stopping them falling out later. Before mixing the resin and iron mixture I used a 240 grit emery cloth to make the, the slideway more inviting for the resin. To make sure that it was as clean as it could possibly be I used a clean cloth and a liberal amount of acetone to ensure it was fully degreased. To prevent the resin from gluing the aluminium angle onto the bedway I applied the only releasing agent I could lay my hands on, petroleum jelly. While applying the jelly to the aluminium strip it also covered the rollers quite well and the ends and edges of the strip at the same time. More by default than design. At this point I started to mix the iron dust into the resin. I could only guess at the amount of resin that I needed for this particular mix. So I used one tube of resin and one of the hardener with about a spoonful of iron powder. Laying the resin mix onto the V-ways was only hampered by the small and inadequate size of the spatula. Working the mix was a bit like laying a very grainy body filler. The mix did its best to stick to absolutely anything it touched. I was somehow certain at this point that I was going to end up scraping off a lot more than I'd bargained for. While I was applying the mix it left me feeling like I was making one big mistake. You know the feeling. The one where the heart and mind have a punch up. Still, it's too late now. It's done. About six hours later, nearing the end of the cure time, I couldn't wait anymore so I, I, I removed the weights and lifted the aluminium strip. Well, it sort of popped off really. This was the bit that I was most worried about. What would it look like? Would the resin stick to the slide or to the strip? Has the resin slumped out of the bottom? Has it even set? It seems I needn't really have worried. The first thing I did was to use a craft knife to trim off all of the excess resin and clean off any flashing. This was a particularly easy task because the resin, although set, it wasn't rock hard. It was a bit like soft rubber. Shaving the excess resin off the important surfaces at this moment in time was a good call because after a good 24 hours it really was set and the resin had built up to about 0.2 to 0.3 millimetres. That's about 8 to 12 thou above and that's good. 
Now that I've done one, I felt more confident about what I needed to do to get the other two slides fixed. One change I made to the process was to lay some iron dust onto the aluminium or aluminium strip after it was given a few rollers and treated to a good coating of petroleum jelly. The rest of the process remained the same, that is, the slides were cleaned, the resin was mixed with iron dust, a larger scraper was used to apply it, the aluminium angle strips were put on top, weight was placed on top of that for about six hours, then the weights and the strips were removed. All the excess resin was scraped from the top faces and from the recesses, then the whole lot was left to cure for a further two days. The reason I chose to add iron dust to the resin was partly because, to a degree, it self-lubricates and it should, when oiled, help the resin to withstand the wear that it'll be having to resist. And partly because I saw videos adding metal powders to resin to create metal objects. So I thought, why not have a go? Before the resin was left to fully cure for a couple of days, I scraped off all the excess resin from all the cracks and crevices and off the top face. After cleaning the slides, they look pretty grim with ripples and potholes all over the place. In fact, they very much resemble Britain's road system at the moment. I think because of my choice of release agent, namely petroleum jelly, some spots of resin decided to remain on the angle strip. I further assumed that if I hadn't taken the angle strips off at about six hours, I might have been looking at a damage limitation exercise. To start with, I bridged the V-slides with a strip of 40 grit emery cloth and held it to shape by using an angle strip as a profile. I left the emery cloth wider than I needed it to be on one side so that I could grip it against the side of the profile strip. Then carefully slide the profile strip back and forth on top of the resin to quickly remove the hard irregular skin. This proved to be a very useful tool as it removed most of the excess resin and maintained the V-slide profile at the same time. As I didn't want to rub anything off the cast iron main slide, I kept the majority of the emery rubbing over the resin area. Despite this, the resin feathered very well. The same process was repeated on the other two slides. Now that I've got the built up slide somewhere near straight, I finished off by using the straight edge to get the high spots down to the same height as the least worn or unused parts of the main slide. I started with scraping the tailstock slide first because this slide was the least affected and in theory should be the simplest one to get finished. The two main slides were a little more complex due to the fact that they not only have to run parallel and level to other component parts of the bed, but they must remain true to the saddle. Remember, as I have always said, I'll never be able to get them perfect, but I should have improved on what I originally had at the beginning. Not bad, less than a thou deviation compared to the previous five to six thou. I couldn't resist putting the saddle on at this stage just to see how things were shaping up. Surprisingly enough, it wasn't too bad. 
nearest slide to me wasn't showing much contact, mainly because the two inside slides were in need of a little bit of attention. However, after a slight adjustment to the inside faces, all four faces showed a positive contact. It wasn't all plain sailing at this point because I had to be careful not to scrape too much off all four faces while confirming with the combined use of the straight edge, the V-block roller and micrometer and the main saddle. The combination of all three measurement devices led finally to the saddle having a deviation as much as about 0.1 millimetre, which is about 4 thou. It's a lot better than the original 0.52 millimetres, which was 20 thou. The only issue I have is that the nearest slide to me still looks like one of the UK's worst roads with gaps and ruts. To tidy it up a bit more means I'd have to buy some more JB Weld and besides it may upset the apple cart if I start to play about with it now. Who knows I might do something about that another time especially if I win the lottery. So as not to confuse the issue, I used Red Engineer's marking paste. I had to buy some because I couldn't find any more red lipstick. Um, I used it in combination with the saddle and I used blue with the straight edge. At this end of the main slide the saddle fits perfectly and the red marking pattern on the underside of the saddle is still in good order apart from being a little bit light at the front and back. The red ink is still failing to show up on the video though. I suppose the question is, will the resin system be robust enough to withstand the pressures brought about by normal everyday to day working on the lathe? I'm not sure, but I will keep you posted. The next job is to start fitting stuff back on the machine and if they need fixing first I'll see what I can do in the next video. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.